What's going on, guys? I'm Chris, and today I'm doing a full spoiler review of the New Mutants, the new X-Men Marvel film that just hit theaters, but uh, I'm not doing this alone. I'm joined by my great friend and fellow YouTuber, Trevor from Film Geeks. How you doing, Trevor? Dude, I'm doing great. I'm, I'm excited to talk about the New Mutants, a full spoiler dive, and I'm uh, glad we're doing this, man. Thanks for, thanks for having me on, bro. Yeah, of course, always. And we also run the Film Saga podcast, so feel free to check us yeah. out over on Instagram at the Film yep. Saga podcast for new episodes. Have a lot of fun doing that. But uh, The New Mutants is a movie that we both have seen, obviously. We saw it Thursday night. Um, this is a movie that's been plagued by delay after delay. I never thought it was going to see the light of day, and it's finally out now. And before we get into our spoiler thoughts, I just want to hear, what did you think of the movie? I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. I'm like, it was fine. It's very forgettable, which we'll get to here in a second. That was okay. I watched it at the drive-ins, and the moon was so bright. No lie, there was like a moon glare, so it was very hard to see. Yeah. And it was uh, it was unfortunate for me, but um, I liked it, kind of. I think I enjoyed going to the theater more than the movie itself. Like, oh, it feels yeah. good to be back going to the theater, but uh, sure. the movie was – I hate to be that guy, but it was kind of a stinker to me. Yeah. Uh, it definitely <laughs> had a very weak script. Uh, the acting was uh, even off, and I don't like to take shots at actors, but it was just – it was off. Uh, yeah. And all around, it was just not really even a horror film in my eyes. So I had a lot of issues with the movie. Sure. Uh, one of the the weaker, not even just uh, movies this year, movies in general that I've seen recently. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can go ahead and dive into spoilers. So if you have not seen The New Mutants, this is your final warning. Uh, feel free to check it out and then come back here. And if you don't care about getting spoiled, then yeah. enjoy our discussion. The movie opens with like this something happens and we don't really know what's going on. Someone's yeah. kind of running through the snowy woods and then um, she like collapses. We really don't know much about what's happening. There's a voiceover about like bears. There's two types of bears, as my dad said. And then she wakes up in like a hospital and it felt a little mumbled to me, a little messy, how we just got thrown right into it so quick. Uh, and yeah. I feel like even as the movie went on, we never really got to know um, Danny, I believe is her main, the main yeah. character's name. I feel like we never got to know her and really had reason to root for her. What do you think? Danny being like the main focal point in this movie was probably like one of its weaker aspects. I'm not trying to take a shot at this gal, but wasn't the strongest actress and the acting across the board wasn't the best in this film. But like she was, wasn't someone you could root for and she wasn't really someone you could understand and you couldn't really see where she was coming from. And then when she started giving out lines of dialogue, it just sounded so cringe and cheesy. I was like, I've had enough of you on the screen. I, I know it's, I'm kind of like beating her up hard, but um, yeah, I wasn't the, her biggest fan and her power was kind of like a mystery. And like when it kind of came to fruition of what her powers is, she makes people see uh, their worst nightmares. I was like, okay. That's very like cliche. Like we've seen that before. I'm not gonna say we haven't, you know. Um, yeah. Did I? I was. I don't know if it couldn't. If she wasn't protagonist or an antagonist. I couldn't just get behind her like, at all. I wasn't just a fan. Character motivations all around were really lacking. Yeah. Um. Another another issue I have with the movie is the predictability. They're like showering. They're like in the community shower. Like they're yeah. she, like Arya gives like a glance over. I was like, they're gonna end up together. Like they made it so obvious. I don't know if that was the point, oh. but like. I knew from that moment they're they're going to get together. And then even the scene after that, it shows, like, on the screen. I've heard someone say it's from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm not really sure. It shows, like, um, a female relationship, a female-female relationship. And I was like, okay, they're definitely going that route. I didn't have an issue with it. I think they tried to make it, like, it was going to be a surprise. But it was pretty obvious from the start for me. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, um... I really actually dug that approach. One of my favorite things in the film, I didn't talk about that in my review because I didn't want to spoil it, but like, yeah. I didn't see that coming. And then like when it happened, my girlfriend and I were like, wow. Like, I thought that was like, I thought it was a good move on Marvel's part. I actually liked that part of the side of the film. Um, I think the relationship kind of progressed way too fast a little bit. I, I actually liked that they did that. I was like, good for Marvel. Like, I, I didn't know that they were going to go this route, and I thought that was I thought it was a cool move. I thought it was nice that they put it in the in the movie. I just think it was a little predictable. When they kiss, my girlfriend and I were like, wow. My girlfriend was like, are they going to get together? She's literally what she said. And I was like, no way. Oh, my God. Wow. This is <laughs> – I was, I was actually surprised yeah. by it. So I thought yeah. it was – I thought it was a nice touch. I thought it was cool. Charlie Heaton from Stranger Things is in this yeah. in this movie on said show. He plays Jonathan Byers in Stranger Things, and I, I like his character for the most part in the TV show. But He's in this, good. no, it's not really his fault in my opinion. The script is no. so poorly written. Like he's got some Southern Kentucky accent going on, and it's just bad. You shouldn't give people accents if they can't like keep them comfortably. You know, like even Maisie Williams, I think she's great as Arya Stark, but she has like um, an Irish accent, which just is not working well for her. You know, she's like. Yeah. 
Irish, British, because she is British from her life, going back and forth. And Anna Taylor Joy's like, oh, yes, I was a goon, I'm an assassin. She's like this really bad Russian accent. These accents just did not do justice for these characters in his script. Again, the script was terrible. I mean, like, Anna Taylor Joy literally has a line where, like, Birdo, the flaming guy, you know, he was like, yeah. you can't, she's, it's magic. Or someone yells that. And she's like, so am I. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, God. Right, yeah. My biggest issue with the movie, if you watch my regular review, I said, I have one issue I will touch on in the spoiler review that's massive. And it's the fact that, first of all, we are thrown into this hospital or whatever it is from yes. the start. There's no, like, background as to what it is. But the issue I have is there's one person running the entire facility. Um, it's a massive facility. There's only five, like, mutants there. One person in a surveillance system that just acts as, like, the all-seeing being. Like, this surveillance system is, like, tracking everyone. There's no explanation as to why the hell it's there, like, to what it really is. And that just, that bothered me, how the surveillance system would, like, progress the plot and stuff. I feel like they would have more than just one lady there. And that could be a budgetary thing. It felt really off to me. I was like, this just doesn't yeah. make any sense. Like, why would they be sent here? Like, I think they would be sent to a different facility like the one that uh, Danny envisions where they're going to go next. I feel like that would just get sent straight there. I 100% agree. But then we find out that that lady does have power. She like the four fields, like she does the yeah. and stuff. But I was like, this is, it seemed like a big budget thing. Like I was like, oh, they can hire a couple more like just bodyguards, bodies to be there, extras. You know, that's what I thought was really weird. The first 45 minutes supposed to be like character development and everything. But like, it was shit, man. Like, I'm sorry to say, it but like, it, just, it wasn't good, dude. Like it was no, like, I, it wasn't as interesting. Like the whole time I was kind of like, Let's get some, like, it's a Marvel movie. Like, like it's an X-Men movie. Like, the X-Men's known for having good action. I was like, let's get this picking up a little bit. It took forever. And I was like, that should have been sped up or used better. Like, the time just didn't really work out well. There's okay. literally no action sequences for, like, almost the first hour of the movie. And then yeah. there's not really an actual action scene until the very end of the movie. There's, like, yeah. moments of, like, excitement, kind of. Not really. Yeah, yeah, but the exactly. final act is bizarre. In my opinion, it's bizarre. Anya Taylor Joy's character, I don't remember. The movie's kind of forgettable. Uh, yeah, her character really has like visions. It's like a Slenderman kind of guy. And yeah. like those people just like clone and they're running around and then they're just gone. And then a massive bear pops up, um, which is Danny's <laughs> biggest fear. So it's this big spirit bear that looks like something out of like a uh, Power Rangers movie or like a Transformers movie, but the CGI is really bad. And that's the threat is a massive bear that's just running around. And I want to know what you think of it. Um, well, when you put it that way, it sounds just completely stupid and absurd, you know. Uh, yeah. But the third act, I was kind of not just bored. But I was just uninterested throughout the entire film. But when the third act hit, I was like, I didn't know it was a third act. And then, um, but like when the big action finally hit, you know, I was like, this is kind of cool. For like the movie not having many cool scenes, I thought it was kind of a cool thing. And um, like obviously the the main nurse lady, I thought she was the worst actress, by the way, the gal bad, who ran yeah, it. Bad. God, she was bad. Um, but like when she takes on the character Danny and she gets the messages, is like terminate immediately. Also I was like, Mike, sorry to cut in, but that was predictable to me. That she was yeah, gonna I, turn the way they yeah, were setting exactly. her up in the first. Yeah, act. yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. And when they when she got the messages, I was like, oh no way. And then I I it kind of like it wasn't like I don't know, I wasn't really reading the film too much, you know, so I wasn't like surprised my girlfriend. God love her, you know, but she was like, no way. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I could see that. Everything that happened, I could see. And like, if you look back at the first trailer for this dude, like every, like the, you know, the wall closing in with everyone's like faces, yeah. like that wasn't here. This movie, movie, like it wasn't even, it had no horror elements. People say it did, it had zero. And oh, if yeah. it did, I would have been so much more interested. And those Slenderman people, I thought the same thing, Slenderman with these faces. I was like, okay, yeah, this is getting interesting. Okay. Then this huge grizzly bear pops up and, when Danny, the girl, the main character, like that's her worst fear or whatever, and like she goes out and she says, "No, stop!" Like that's, that's how like she said. I was like, in the movie, right? How like, everything ends, and I was, and I was like, "What?" And then the movie just kind of ended after that, man. Yeah, and I was like, and then when it ended, we could have done 25 more minutes at least, at least for me, dude. I was like, yeah. when it ended, my girlfriend and I were like, "That's it." Like it would have been cool for them to almost speed up the beginning a little bit halfway through the film they break out of there and they go to the place where like they were trying to go and i tried to yeah. save them it could have been yeah. a much more epic movie but like it felt like it was five minutes like it didn't like fly by because it was good but like when it ended i was kind of like seriously and like, i i feel like i'm just completely trashing on it i didn't hate it because something in me won't let me hate it but i didn't like even like it it was just like meh like for the category it would be meh meh you know it's like yeah. it just wasn't 
It was extremely underwhelming, and I expected that going in. I don't know if you did, because like this production hell movie never was going to see the light of day. I expected that when I was going in, but I didn't expect to feel this just like nothing. Yeah. Like I walked out of the theater, felt nothing. I really wish there was more horror elements. I thought they were going to go there early on. There's a scene where uh, Birdo is in, swimming in the pool, and then uh, Anya Taylor Joy disappears, and I'm like, oh, they're going horror here, so it's going to shift. Yeah. And the CGI there was so cheesy when he was like fire, and that that whole bit was just like way too extra. It was almost cringy to me when he was like, I burnt my last girlfriend alive. She was in my hands, and I just get too hot in the moment, and I burned her alive. I was <laughs> laughing under my mask yeah. in the future. I was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, later even worse the the line in the movie i didn't want to say it in the um in the regular review is when charlie heaton's character <laughs> looks over at birdo and the bear is like approaching danny and he goes nut up <laughs> <laughs> i started laughing so hard and then he turned birdo, nut up yeah i laughed so hard and um God, I don't know. Like the budget for this film must have been like zero dollars because like it could have been yeah. so epic <laughs> seeing everyone's powers, but like we didn't. And like seeing, uh, I think Liliana's Anna Taylor Joy's character's name. Like seeing like when she gets like her little puppy she carries around her hand turns into like a little dragon. I was like, what powers are these, yeah, dude? Exactly. I was just so confused. I was like, what? Ah, I'm so lost. Like, and like they try yeah. their best to make you care about each character, like how Charlie Heaton's character's yeah. father, he like killed him in the coal mine. That's probably the most compelling storyline. And then of course Danny. Yeah. But we really learn nothing about Anya Taylor Joy aside from the fact she was like, I killed 18 men. And then it shows these flashbacks of her with like Slenderman people, but we don't really get much more than that in my opinion. I don't think there yeah. is. Birdo, yeah, we don't learn like, much about him. And then uh, Rain, we don't even know that much about. No, and exactly. This comes down to the character development. The first 40 minutes was like trying to, but like it just felt, just felt wasted in a way. Yeah. And um, I felt like this film could have been a ton better than it was. Yeah, I have, and I've heard people liking it. I'm glad if you enjoy the movie, all the power to you. I'm glad you did. And I kind of do. People, I know I'm hating on it, but I kind of do. So like, hey, like, but it's sitting at 56% audience score, 21 critic score on Rotten Tomatoes. There is not a post-credit scene, if you're wondering, which is weird because it's a Marvel movie, but what would they have one for? Who knows? Um, and the movie itself, right when it ended, I was like, I never want to watch that again, and I'm already forgetting what happened. And I'm sure that months from now, I'll come back to this video just so that I can remember what happened because it's very forgettable, cheesy, just bland, and not a movie I ever want to see again, unfortunately. So I'll disagree with you there. I want to rewatch it, and like okay. I'm a physical media guy. I'll probably buy it because I'm a dumbass, but I'll probably buy it one day. <laughs> And I'm sure it will go on Disney Plus soon because your theater was empty, right? Two other people in there. Yeah, it was almost that's the first how, time ever that I was the only one in the theater, but I didn't get lucky enough. That's how most of the movies were. So this is going to be a box oh. office bomb. And um, I don't know how well it's doing for like giving confidence for other films. Hopefully Tenet turns things around, gets the box office numbers back up. But um, it was – yeah, it was my, – my drive-in was slammed. So that yeah. was cool. And I'm just happy this movie finally came out. So honestly, we can stop hearing about it. Like it just, it was, yeah. it was becoming a joke and it's sure. finally happened. And months from now, it'll just be forgotten um, essentially. Yeah. But if you have any final thoughts you want on the movie, go ahead. If not, uh, you can tell the people where they can find you. Overall, I thought it was an yeah. okay movie. It's probably like a, like a 50%, five out of 10. Like yeah, I gave it like, like five out of 10, which is like yeah. one, 1. 1.5 out of five on Letterboxd, same thing. Yeah. And it's just because of how forgettable it is. No, it's extremely forgettable, but uh, I had fun doing this. I wanted to talk about it because, like, I was excited to talk about it, you yeah. know, and uh, after you brought up the whole bear thing, just how it just sounded so dumb. So, yeah, but um, you guys can find me over on the Film Geeks YouTube channel. I talk about movies. We, Me and Chris and I do the podcast, the Film Soccer podcast, over on his channel. You can listen to that anywhere you listen to podcasts. And, dude, thanks for having me on. It's always a blast doing these. For sure, man. Yeah, I'm glad we got to sit down and do this. This is our first ever, like, spoiler review for new movies, yeah. uh, which is awesome. I hope to do more in the future. Yeah. Um, and as for the film stock channel, yeah, I've got live streams, collabs, podcast episodes, all that good stuff coming up. Thank you again for joining me, Trevor. Definitely check out his channel if you have not. And until next time, see you guys later. See you guys later.